where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Today we're going to look at a name of Jesus that we find in the book of John. John is such a different style of book than the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It was probably because John knew what the other gospel writers had written, and he didn't want to rehash all of it, but he wanted people to see Jesus from his perspective and believe in him. The beginning of the gospel didn't start with Jesus' birth or ministry, but with the beginning of time. John asserts that Jesus was also the creator. He uses a different name for Jesus than you'll find anywhere. The Word. That's the term I was thinking about today. The Word. In Greek, it's logos. That Greek word implies much more than we can get into today. But I wanted to think about what Jesus used words for. So many times Jesus used one or two words, and when he said them, things happened. In creation, Jesus, as part of the triune God, used one word, which is actually three words in English, let there be, to create each day. And what he said each day happened, just because he said it. Hebrews 1.3 says that he upholds all things by the word of his power. Not only did he make everything with his word, but his word keeps the whole universe going. Jesus' healings sometimes also needed only a few words. He told the man with the withered hand, stretch out your hand, and it was made whole. To the man with leprosy, he said, be clean, and he was clean. To the deaf man, Jesus told his ears, be opened, and they were. To Lazarus, he said, come out, and he was raised. To the daughter of Jairus, who everyone said was dead, he said, get up, and she did. As the centurion in Capernaum said, Jesus had authority. He wanted Jesus to heal his servant, but he didn't want to bother Jesus, since Jews weren't supposed to enter Gentile houses. So the centurion boldly declared in faith, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, Nowhere in Israel have I found such faith. And to the centurion he said, Go, let it be done to you as you have believed. And the servant was healed from that very moment. Jesus has that kind of authority. And not just over diseases. He had that kind of authority over other things too. When he called some of his disciples, his brief words, Follow me, were all that they needed. He drove out evil spirits with a word. He calmed the sea by saying, Peace be still. He even had authority over his moment of death when he said one word, which translates, it is finished. My favorite word that he said, however, happened in John 18. Jesus and his disciples had been praying, or in the disciples' case, sleeping, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus knew Judas was leading soldiers up to arrest him, so he wasn't the least bit surprised or frightened. He was totally in control not just of himself and his emotions, but he was in control of the whole situation. So all these soldiers and Judas came tramping up with lanterns and torches and weapons, and Jesus takes control of the situation by confronting them and saying, Whom do you seek? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And here's Jesus' two-word reply, I am. Remember these words anywhere else? That's how God identified himself to Moses at the burning bush, I am. And when he said this, the whole kitten caboodle of them just drew back and fell to the ground. Talk about authority. Then Jesus proceeded to order them to let his disciples go free. He was completely in control of his own arrest. The word is completely in control of our lives, too. He speaks words of life, hope, and love into our hearts, into our situations, into our crises. And his words change things. For me, he spoke no fear, and I was able to speak in front of groups with courage and confidence in the words that he put in my mouth. 
How has God spoken transforming words into your life? Jesus was the Word, God's Word, made into a physical body, living among us. Though He's no longer with us in bodily form, He sent the Holy Spirit to be with us and speak His Word in us and through us. What words have come out of your mouth lately? Are they words of encouragement, hope, and love to build others up? God also uses His Word, the Bible, to speak into our lives. What treasures have you found lately? I'd love to hear about them. You can contact me at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. I'm Carla Early. Thanks for listening. And remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.